when players spend money on their favorite game whether it's through microtransactions or dlc one of the biggest fears is that the game will eventually die and then the money that you've spent on those digital goods essentially goes away essentially your money just goes poof it disappears but as long as there's an active player base for that game you can continue playing it and enjoying it and getting value out of the things that you spent your money on so for me when i find out that a well for a game actually just quits the game it's a little bit odd to me listen maybe i'm just poor and i don't know what it's like to have all this money okay but i've been playing rise of kingdoms for years and over the past couple of years i spent a lot of time covering some of the most powerful players in the game and as i've made those videos discussing the changes in power ranking amongst the top players i've noticed some of these players actually never lose power they just quit the game and at this point I've noticed that there's been quite a few of significant names in the rise of kingdoms community that have actually quit after collectively spending literally millions of dollars on this game it's not like the game died these players just decided that they no longer wanted to play so today we're going to take a look at top five of the most powerful players in rise of kingdoms that just quit and then later in the video we're going to go over some reasons why i suspect these players may be quitting some of these things come right from their mouths they've said it themselves and others are reasons that i am speculating on and things that i've noticed myself as being a member of this community for a while what's going on guys cheers okay the first player i want to talk about is burnaby now if you've watched any of my most powerful players in rise of kingdoms videos you'll know that he typically lands on that video even though he is a player that quit quite a while ago at this point he probably quit over a year year and a half ago at this point his account is in kingdom 1680 and he has over 800 million power this player first ended up coming to prominence and being sort of famous in the rise of kingdoms community because he posted a few videos on YouTube or maybe somebody in his kingdom or lines did of him just literally pressing the gem troop button during pre KBK he would spam the gem button to get his kingdom to number one in the pre KBK rankings which if you're watching this video and you don't play rise of kingdoms I first of all welcome to the channel I don't know what you're doing here but second of all it's literally thousands and thousands of dollars to do that I mean training 2000 Royal Guards is 2800 gems which is over ten dollars okay so pressing this button one time costs more than ten dollars and he was just spamming it he was just spamming it and then one day he just quit he just got up to 800 million power and just decided that that's it he's done he's done he quit he's it was over and we've never heard from him since it's been years now and he's just gone from the game next up we have effing boss this is a player who also used to go by the name of boss blake they're currently in kingdom 1860 and i'm gonna be honest i don't know this player i haven't talked to this player and as far as i know i don't think that they ever made it public that they quit so i mean technically i guess they might not have quit however i do just want to point out that their power hasn't changed by a single digit in literally months which means they couldn't have trained a single troop this means that they couldn't have unlocked a new commander or leveled up a new commander like it's so easy to gain a single power point and the fact that it hasn't moved in a really long time says to me that they probably quit the game and also they're no longer in an alliance there's nothing on their achievement wall there's no photos here in the album this is a player that was around for a very long time and consistently would make the top 10 most powerful players in the game list and even their kill points are quite impressive so it's pretty shocking to me to find that a player like this would just quit the game and we just have no idea what happened to them maybe some of you know or if boss Blake is watching then comment it down below I would love to hear from you but yeah I guess they just vanished next up we have DN cookie this is another player once again as you can tell by their power that was constantly a pretty much I think every single episode they were on the most powerful players in the game list and once again their power has not moved by a single digit in months and they are no longer in an alliance in kingdom 1556 i don't know if this player actually quit the game like maybe they just log in and talk to their alliance and then log off but to not move a single power point is insane it's it's literally insane it's almost impossible if you play the game at all 
to not move your power at all so i'm left to assume that this player just quit now I, I don't know it's possible that this account could have been banned that's another thing that could have happened to boss Blake right like sometimes these players you know if they refund abuse or if they account share or if the account gets hacked and then it gets disputed like I don't know I'm not saying any of these things happened I'm not I'm not suggesting that I'm not accusing them of that uh, but I am just saying that like one of the other uh, possibilities is that this player did not quit but their account either was hacked banned terminated whatever and they just decided to stop playing and that's that and honestly uh with over 900 million power this is still one of the top top 10 most powerful players in the game right here and they just quit again this is I uh, this has to be hundreds of thousands of dollars like I, I cannot stress that enough the amount of money that it takes to get this power is absolutely ridiculous and then they're just gone if dn cookie is watching or if anybody knows dn cookie let me know in the comment section below did they quit did they get hacked did they get bound what what happened here i'd love to know number four on the list is the nefisto uh this was actually announced and i guess confirmed on chiskel's youtube channel the nefisto is an infamous player who showed up i think like maybe a year ago i don't know but they haven't been around that long and they instantly shot up to being one of the most powerful players in the game and the amount of money that it takes to get that powerful that quickly is actually insane like it's one thing to get to a really high power eventually but to get to this power in a short amount of time is mind-blowing you have to sp you have to literally buy like every single bundle every single day just to get the gems and it's it's actually insane and we can see you know if we go into the album here like we we know we know nefisto got money bro he he got he's balling okay so it, it makes sense but yeah eventually nefisto just decided that he was going to quit now i don't know if he's going to maybe give his account to players of his kingdom to manage it i think he mentioned something like that in chiskel's video i'll try to remember to link chiskel's video down below if you actually want to know why uh, or how nefisto is quitting or leaving the game because his power actually has changed in the last couple of months uh it's gone up slightly but not by a crazy amount so certainly somebody is probably playing the account or managing it but as far as we know from nefiso himself he he actually quit and then finally we have bunny now this is the most recent uh player of prominence to announce that they are quitting the game and you can see that you know bunny's power isn't as high as the others on this list but that's because his kill points are absolutely insane because bunny is a literal monster and will forever be a legend in rise of kingdoms super powerful player super active i think i've only talked to him like one time like maybe a year or two ago and he was super nice right he's well known and well loved in the rise of kingdoms community but he announced I think also again through a Chiskel video that he was quitting the game he might actually be in the top 10 if not top 10 then probably top 15 highest kill points in the entire game right so he essentially converted his power into kills and like that's what any warrior would do right oh my god he expertise Suleiman bro <laughs> listen if I expertise Suleiman I'd probably quit the game dude to be honest <laughs> So those five players collectively have almost certainly spent at least over half a million dollars, if not over a million dollars on Rise of Kingdoms. I mean, when you get up to those numbers, it's hard to even like, it's hard to even get like pinpoint a range. It's so much power and it's so much money that it's hard to really even say with some degree of accuracy, but it is an insane amount of money. So why would these players quit the game instead of just playing it until it becomes a dead game basically well let's talk about it okay the first thing is power creep right uh we've talked about this quite a bit on the channel but there are constantly new things being added to the game and new commanders where you know older commanders are no longer really viable right and, and one of the things that kind of influences a well or a kraken to spend money in a game like this is because they want to be the best in the game and if that goal post is constantly being moved then it can get frustrating right especially i mean imagine spending five six seven figures on a video game uh and then a couple of updates later you no longer have the latest and greatest thing right like that's that's frustrating for players who've spent that much money you're never effectively done with your account you're never really at end game you can be in the end game but the final state and the highest power of your account is yet to be achieved because they're constantly releasing 
new things and part of that is good right if they just stopped releasing stuff then it would get boring everyone would figure out what the meta is and then that would be the meta forever and then uh, that's just lame I would be boring and people would quit out of boredom right but I think one thing that really did it for a lot of people was the armament and inscription system right the formation system this is uh from what I hear from other whales that a very frustrating system to participate in because you know if you have a system like the equipment system you can craft a piece of equipment and you know the exact stats that you're going to get and you know exactly what you need to do to upgrade that piece of equipment if you want to get a special talent on that equipment you know exactly what you need you need blueprints and you need materials and there's a guaranteed way to get it if you get lucky and get it earlier with with getting a crit on a forge then great but if you don't then at least you know after a certain number of forges you're guaranteed to get it okay so you have a laid out clear path in front of you to getting the best in slot gear okay you know exactly how to do that and you could even calculate how much money it would take to do that if you were willing to spend all the way there but with the formation system that is not the case it effectively is a, a an equipment system right you pick your formation and then you slap four uh, armaments on there but these armaments unlike the equipment are random stats right we have all these armaments here uh, and they all have different stats even though they're the same armament right this is epics of olympia they're the same one and all of them have randomized stats and even if they have archer attack for example uh they have different archer attack for the two different pieces right it's the same rarity the same armament the same everything but the buffs are literally different so there's no controlling how to get your best in slots uh and you don't even know like what is the upper limit of this is there an armament with three percent archer attack is there one with four percent archer attack is there one with six percent archer attack what is the highest amount possible i don't even know right i'm not sure i know the answer to that and that i think is very frustrating because this effectively goes from the equipment system which is you know a clear-cut path to progression uh even if it's it ex it's expensive and there's some luck involved but you can guarantee get it eventually the armament system is effectively just pulling the reel on a slot machine you are just dumping money into the system and it spits out random stats and there's nothing you can do to change that that you you are locked in now i think they have implemented or are going to implement a way to re-roll the stats here but a re-roll is just another pull of the slot machine like there's it's still not a guarantee right and so that's the part that is mega frustrating for people who you know obviously it's frustrating for free to play players uh but it's especially frustrating for people who are spending thousands and thousands of dollars and it's quite literally possible for a free to play player to just get lucky and get a better armament right uh, and that's the part that is super super frustrating when you spend money on the system but not only that even if you do get a really good armament with a really lucky stat roll um it doesn't have an inscription so it's still not best in slot now you have to worry about getting an inscription here uh, and yes there are ways to get inscriptions right obviously you have the kvk shop here which they have actually updated to purchase one inscription for one armament uh, and it's a slow grind but even still like man it's 99 percent luck based and that sucks that sucks for people who want to be the best but they just can't do it no matter how much money they spend they potentially will never get there and that just sucks another thing that i think he uh you know drives players away a little bit is the events here okay um these events some events like the Karak ceremony have been around for a long time okay King of Tribes long time the Japan event th these are just this is basically just a different uh reskin of every civilization of the game it's the same event right so a lot of these events are the same for a long time it's been years now since some of these players have started playing the game uh and every you know month we're getting repeats of the of similar events right uh, and over the years they've added new events of course they've, they've added new ones but like mightiest governor this has been around since the beginning and this is literally just a spender event basically but they've added like you know alliance mobilization and path of wisdom is similar to other events but it's it's you know it's a new thing but at, at the end of the day right um you know if you're if you're a whale who's been playing for years like these events eventually just get stale it, it just gets boring doing Karak ceremony for the 200th time right uh, but you still do it because the rewards are really good but you know when you feel like you need to do something rather than you want to do something um then the game feels more like a job as opposed to a game that you play for fun and if you just get bored of doing the same events that you feel like you need to do over and over again 
you don't want to do it anymore right just like eventually people quit jobs this is the same thing uh, and on top of that um even like the kvk events right kvk is the big event that keeps a lot of players engaged with the game it's kingdom versus kingdom this is like where you get to actually flex your power your commanders your equipment this is where you dominate on the battlefield and show off how much money you have right uh and and they you know they do continue to release new kvk formats which is great and i hope that they keep doing that like that is the lifeblood of the game so you know if they stop releasing new kvks that's a bad sign for the longevity of the game uh so they haven't done that yet um we don't know when that'll happen hopefully no time soon but the more recent kvk formats have not been that exciting I mean that's just, that's my opinion but it feels like that is the case or, or the opinion that a lot of people share king of the nile was like i mean there's a lot of a lot of downtime in the beginning there's a couple of big fights and that's it right um the crystal technology is a system that a lot of players hate and that's been in the game for a while and that's plagued pretty much every kvk since it's come into the game the siege of orleans event uh i've heard was like okay but there's a lot of frustrating parts about that specific kvk type as well right so I think the best KVK formats are formats that came out years ago. And that's really not great for the longevity of the game, right? If you're talking about a whale who's been playing since 2019 or 2020, if the best KVK formats are ones that they've already played a bunch of times, um, then that just gets really boring, right? It gets really boring. If you play World of Warcraft, how many times are you going to do the same end game raid every single week? How many weeks in a row are you going to do that before you decide to quit and play another game right it's it's sort of the same thing and that's happening at a time where there's never been more competition in this game niche right rise of kingdoms exploded in popularity it's a good game okay but since it become it became popular there's been more and more developers saying oh okay well that 4x strategy game formula is still profitable it's still enjoyed by millions then we might as well make our own and even the developers the, the people that made rise of kingdoms have made multiple games competing with rise of kingdoms they've released warpath they've recently released call of dragons which is effectively um a sequel a spiritual successor to rise of kingdoms it's got better graphics new uh, combat and new strategy there's a ton of things that are improved about that but there's also other games that are very similar with different graphical styles potentially better graphics right if you look at games like land of empires uh that's got a higher quality graphics for at least the heroes in the game same thing with something like infinity kingdom it's a different art style but the heroes are all in 3d all that stuff so uh, there's a lot of games that are competing with rise of kingdoms right now that have other things to offer and on top of that a lot of these games because they're entering such a competitive market what they'll do is their bundles like when you spend money on the game you actually get more for what you spend than in a game like rise of kingdoms uh, and i know that maybe like that's not that enticing to a lot of people but when you talk about whales right if a whale is looking to invest five thousand ten thousand fifty thousand a hundred thousand dollars into a game and I, I know I'm saying the word invest but just to be clear these are not investments right this money is going away it's zero this is an expense for your entertainment purposes only it's not an investment and even if you sell your account you will get a fraction of what your account is worth so it's the worst investment of your life okay but um you know games like land of empires or infinity kingdom will have bundles in the game very similar to this but instead of getting 1050 gems you'll get 1500 gems right so you'll literally just get more for the same amount of money because the game is less popular they're looking to attract more players and they're willing to sell their in-game things for fewer dollars that way they can you know make more money and that makes complete sense so the competition has never been higher and the events are getting kind of stale but on top of that so is the engine I mean the, the game and the graphics for rise of kingdoms and even the combat uh, which is what made rise of kingdoms so popular in the first place um it's starting to feel a little bit outdated at this point right we have games now like call of dragons which again is also made by the same people uh, that make rise of kingdoms but you know the, their open field combat there is just more fluid it's just a higher a better graphic quality there's better ranged combat there's different uh, unit types there's flying units right there's a lot that you can do in the open field in that game and in other competing games that you can't really do in rise of kingdoms and when rise of kingdoms came out uh what i'm doing here is moving my commander my army around in the open field wherever i want uh and when rise of kingdoms came out this was unique to rise of kingdoms this 
feature it seems so simple now uh, but back then this was a groundbreaking uh, feature and even when rise of kingdoms first came out a lot of people don't know this open field movement was not a thing when rise of kingdoms came out you actually had to send your um, units to a specific location and then you could stop them in the field and then you could send them somewhere else and then you had to stop them in the field but you had to target a specific thing and then stop and go and stop and go now there's open field movement but my point is that even now uh e even with that being groundbreaking in 2018 um or 2019 whenever that feature came into the game we're in 2023 now and that was four years ago but now there's a lot of competition with similar functions and features if not better ones on a better engine that's going to age better with less lag better graphics uh and the competition is just really really high right now so why would you play a game that feels more outdated when you could play a game that feels newer and fresh and the developers know this right and the the rise of kingdoms team is doing the best that they can to combat this right they still have a big update to come out obviously the formation system came out and that was mainly you know to sell armaments that's really what it was but they did add ranged combat with that and that came along you know a few ranged commanders were included in that update so I have them all the way down here they're pretty much trash but you know right now we're actually in between sort of big content releases right they've been releasing one civilization every year uh for the past couple of years right last year we saw the Egypt civilization last summer before that we saw uh the the previous summer we saw the Viking civilization in 2021 and then before that we saw like uh, Arabia Ottoman Empire all that stuff but right now at this moment in time in June 9th when I'm recording this it's been almost a year since we saw a new civilization right so we're kind of in between these really big um these really big uh, content drops and we need sort of a new fresh coat of paint we need a new thing a new big marketing push to bring players back or at least to keep the existing players interested and unfortunately it seems like they put a lot of time and effort into the ranged combat system uh and it didn't really move the needle people didn't really like the ranged combat system uh it's it's not very good it's not very powerful and it's also very boring compared to open field combat right you can send out a ranged unit uh, and it can just sit there and and deal range damage but that's not why you're playing a a war game you don't just want to sit in one spot uh and and be ranged right like that's kind of stupid you're gonna sit here and you're gonna build this for nine seconds and then what i'm just gonna sit there and hope that the enemy comes near me to attack them like it makes sense from a strategic perspective but what players love is the fast paced open field combat of rise of kingdoms uh and I think that's why the range system kind of flopped I think it kind of failed and so right now for a lot of whales it's been a while since we've had a really big update that really changed a lot of things and brought something new and exciting to the game and I do think you know they've they've teased and they've announced a new civilization coming we we know it's Greece right um and that's exciting and I'm I'm happy for that I I can't wait for that to happen uh, I hope a lot of new players try out the game because really the game is very good but right now it feels stale for a lot of people the whales included especially those that have spent six or seven figures on the game where they've already unlocked everything they've done everything they they've done everything they can do and they can't get the better inscriptions so they're basically done okay they're, they've finished but let's get into a couple of things that were actually mentioned specifically by a few players that actually quit so if we take a look at uh what what bunny said and um I think this is also something that uh maybe Nefisto alluded to as well but the game is very time consuming right rise of kingdoms is very time consuming especially if you're a super powerful player uh who is looked to to lead an alliance or even lead a kingdom I know secondhand how much time and effort it takes to run a kingdom I've never done it myself because I know it's crazy okay but I've been in voice chats with you know the leaders of kingdoms and it's insane how much time you have to dedicate to the game you have to constantly be online or have somebody online who can you know place alliance resource pits or to you know wage war and build flags and things like that like it's basically a full-time job uh to lead a kingdom or an alliance and you know if you do that for years it becomes really draining right uh people um you know Dragothian who is another uh, competent creator for rise of kingdoms I don't I, he recently made a, a live stream asking him like where he's been um he quit a while ago I don't know if he's coming back I didn't watch the live stream if he is that's great I love Dragothian but he quits uh because he talked about how you know KVK and the game was sort of interfering with his personal life right and it 
makes sense especially if you're a content creator you have to be where the action is at, at any moment in time uh and you know that's why for me a lot of times i don't cover kvks i don't know if you've noticed that on the channel but that's why because i can't be online all the time i can't do it like for my mental state like i can't do it if i was forced to do that i would have quit the game years ago okay um so that's just the truth and because i, I know that i know that that's the case so i purposely don't do that to myself because i don't want to burn myself out and the other thing too is that rise of kingdoms exploded in popularity in 2020 when the world was shut down a lot of players were stuck inside they had nothing to do and rise of kingdoms you know is a great game when you have time to spend and there's a big active community here and so if you have the time to spend and you can get invested in that community and find people that you like to play with then it's great but we're in 2023 now and the world has been open for a long time and those players especially the mega powerful ones that have been running kingdoms and have been running alliances this whole time uh, they're tired okay it's been years now and they don't maybe work from home anymore right they, they got other stuff to do and how much longer are they going to continue committing hours of their day literally hours of every single day for years to the game especially at a moment where things are dull there's not a big you know we're still waiting for a new sieve latest kvk formats have been kind of mid you know and finally um even if they stayed in those roles it's stressful it's actually stressful to play rise of kingdoms and i think this is again something that bunny alluded to in his message quitting rise of kingdoms it's just it's supposed to be a game and eventually you know the stress of a game sometimes is exciting right like the fact that you could lose everything at any given moment is very stressful but it's also very exciting because that means that your enemy can lose anything and that's like what motivates people to zero other players and it feels good like there's nothing better than just zeroing somebody right just taking all their stuff killing all their troops and knowing that they spent thousands of dollars on that and is gone now like that feels amazing but it can happen to you as well and that's very stressful and when a game starts to be too stressful for too long you have to ask yourself like hang on like is am I still enjoying this right am I still liking the game or am I just playing the game because I feel obligated to do so do I feel like there's a sunk cost fallacy going on here where okay I've already dedicated two years of my life playing this game I can't stop now otherwise it's all for nothing when in reality eventually it's going to be all for nothing anyway right the game eventually will die I don't think it'll be soon but eventually that will happen and at a time where so many things are stressful in the world right now why would you want your entertainment to be stressful as well right you have unlimited competition right now there are so many good games that are out that are free to play and you know a lot of those games probably aren't as stressful as rise of kingdoms a lot of times lately I've been playing Honkai Star Rail and that game has no PvP and for a lot of people that's a turn off but it's actually kind of nice to just not worry about the meta so much right like obviously it's an RPG you want to build your best units but I don't have to worry about like oh if I go offline too long I'm gonna get kicked for my Alliance or if I go offline too long I could get zeroed and lose everything like no everything will be there when I come back same thing with Genshin Impact I haven't played Genshin Impact in months and I know that when I log back in someday uh, Hu Tao is still gonna be there chilling and there's no stress there and and I think that's what some players are looking for now and maybe that's why they're quitting Rise of Kingdoms they're saying hey I can play all these other great games for free and if I want I can spend thousands of dollars to pop off in those games as well but there's no stress to them and I think that is huge anyway I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below especially if you are a spender in games like rise of kingdoms and you've quit them yourself I would love to hear from you down there let me know uh, why did you quit if you did and also why are you still watching content for it I know I know there's some people that are watching my videos that quit rise of kingdoms a while ago and you still watch and for that bro thank you I love the support seriously it, it really means a lot to me but it is something that I'm curious about and I guess maybe it's not that confusing because I've watched plenty of like World of Warcraft videos and I barely play the game so I, I don't know I guess maybe it kind of falls in the same bucket but anyway while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace